Hello, good morning, good afternoon, good evening from wherever you're tuning in from. My name is Abby Pinkard and I'm very excited to welcome you to this webinar hosted by the Process Industry Division of the Institute of Mechanical Engineers. Please do remember as we're going through this to uh, submit your questions on the ask a question box um, and we'll come to those at the end. But as far as an agenda goes this morning, we've got an exciting uh, batch of content for you. We're going to be splitting it into two main parts. So first up, we have the energy and chemical industries. So we've got Masood, Rowie and Emily all presenting for us. Um, and then there'll be a short transition uh, for Morris to introduce the pharmaceutical industry side of things. And as I said, we'll follow up with a and a do make sure to keep in touch. Um, we want this to be as interactive as possible. Um, but without further ado, I'll jump straight on in um, and hand over to Masood. Thank you. Energy and chemicals uh, covers uh, many different business segments, which in higher level you can uh, split them into uh, three uh, different uh, categories, upstream, midstream and downstream, uh, where upstream uh, refers to uh, the production uh, facilities where you extract the resources from underground. Uh, and the midstream is where you have typically your field processing uh, uh, and uh, let's say in gas cases, gas sweetening and, and the stabilizing crude uh, and also the intermediate uh, uh, storages and uh, uh, transport. And downstream is where eventually you make it to product that goes to the consumers like petrochemicals, refineries, LNG plants. And, and also the, the distribution to the, the final uh, uh, consumers. Next slide, please. Natural resources uh, such as crude oil or uh, gas are well known for uh, uh, generating power uh, and or fuels. But what is less known is it's uh, commonly used as feedstock for petrochemicals, which ultimately can end up in uh, different industries like medical goods or packaging or household goods uh, and a and, 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 and lot more, including the mobile phones, laptops, computers, etc. etc. So you can see a few examples here of uh, what, what's used in uh, the medical field, for example, as the safety equipment and uh, research equipment and, uh, and manufacturing equipment. Next slide, please. Just to show you the complexity of the process plants and what we're dealing with, here is the blood flow diagram, high, very high level uh, flow diagram for a, for a refinery uh, unit, for example. Uh, the intent is not, here is not to, uh, to go through the details of each unit or go be specific about uh, refineries, but it just shows the complexity of any process plant we, we deal with. Uh, uh, each uh, shape you see here represents a process unit, not, not necessarily just one, one equipment. Uh, and uh, the typical uh, process you can see in, in all, uh, almost every refinery or uh, petrochemical units. Uh, the, the, also, besides these units, also each, each plant needs its own utilities such as steam, hydrogen, natural gas, electricity. Uh, air to, to, to run, which is adds to the uh, to this plant. Uh, and uh, you can see different technologies used here, for example, distillation, which you, you may remember from your school days, uh, and all some complex uh, processes like uh, hydro uh, cracking of the, uh, the crude uh, in this case. Uh, the, the, in the next slide, I will, I will show you what what is in typically in the let's say uh, in this uh, atmospheric distillation unit that you can see how complex it will get if you add all those units together. Uh, next slide, please. As you can see in, in this slide, uh, what we depicted as one column in, uh, in the distillation unit uh, in the, the block flow diagram actually means a significant number of equipment that is required for this unit to operate. And, and in higher level, if I run uh, through the, uh, the process of how it works, uh, you'll see uh, the crude oil is uh, pumped uh, to 
to disunit. Uh, it's preheat through a number of uh, heat exchangers uh, before getting into fired heater where the temperature significantly rises and then gets into the distillation column uh, where it uh, breaks down to its components that you will see part of them as the, the products coming out of the uh, refinery uh, like jet fuels, uh, diesel, petrol and or other components. Uh, next slide please. And what you see in this slide is uh, what the distillation unit looks like in reality. So in the middle of the, uh, the photo what you see is the distillation column uh, surrounded by a few other columns around it for the product. Uh, and to the right is the fired heater, which increases the fruit crude temperature before it gets into the distillation column. And the bottom of the picture is the, the heat exchange, number of heat exchangers you see that uh, will uh, preheat the crude uh, and they, they increase the uh, refinery uh, efficiency uh, by recovering more heat. Uh, with that, I hand over to Revy, who will run through the mechanical engineer's role in uh, energy and chemicals industry. So, um, what roles are there for mechanical engineers uh, in the energy and chemicals industry? Well, for a start, like myself, you could be an equipment engineer. So, we are the technical authority on behalf of the client engineering contractor uh, in the design and construction of the equipment. So, we'd be uh, responsible sorry, for specifying and requisitioning the equipment to meet uh, all relevant industry standards. We'd evaluate the technical equipment proposals and then you know, select a vendor to then manage through to construction, testing and release of the equipment. Uh, the value of the orders that we place could be in the tens of millions of pounds. And uh, in weight, yeah, we'd be dealing with equipment well over a thousand tons. If you see on the bottom right, that is a atmospheric uh, distillation tower headed for a refinery in Nigeria, I believe. And there is a man there for scale, as you can see. This is enormous equipment. And yeah, you can see the same uh, same vessel on a ship just above that. So another role you could have as a mechanical engineer in the industry is to do the layout. Uh, so that would include defining the location of equipment uh, or pipe racks and structures, electrical stations, buildings, roads, modules, uh, and a lot more. This is a skilled role which requires good understanding of industry practices as there's many possible feasible combinations there's not one exact solution to this uh, some things layout engineer would consider is minimum distances between equipment or or boundaries of so the edge of the module or adjoining roads uh, we'd have to consider hazardous areas prevailing wind direction and yeah operations and maintenance access mechanical engineers will also create and manage a 3d model for the process facility the purpose of the model is primarily to detect clashes in 3D space. Um, the usual suspects are smaller items such as cable trays, piping, ducting, uh, maybe structural steel or lighting and, and more, I'm sure. Usually a catalog of standard equipment is available for, for process plans and the vendors who create equipment items will supply a compatible 3D model in a good level of detail, which will then be incorporated into the entire process plan model. Uh, the layout engineer I mentioned earlier will give the modeler a plot plan, a 2D layout of the plant, and the modeler will then use that and the vendor information supplied to create a 3D model. The model uh, that I mentioned here is reviewed at uh, 30, 60, and 90% progress, um, where the key functions of these meetings are to detect the clashes, uh, look into emergency egress and access, ensure there's uh, sufficient operations and maintenance access ways, and verify the model is as per the process documents. So as we all know, uh, the industry is undergoing tremendous change right now. We're seeing a new series of energy transition projects come into the market. The skills and knowledge gained elsewhere uh, in the energy and chemicals field yet is still directly applicable here. These projects have similar equipment and similar sizes and weights. You know, the flue gas ductwork you see there coming out the power plant could be up to 10 meters in diameter. The columns you see, at the, uh, you see at the absorbers could be 50, maybe 60 meter tall. We're still dealing with incredibly large equipment. Um, and still you have similar engineering work processes that will be undertaken by the engineer for the equipment, both here in a carbon capture plant, if you will, and also in other energy and chemicals projects. So I'd just like to note that engineering a carbon capture plant will not be too alien to an energy and chemicals engineer. And this is more of the work we aim to see in the future. Uh, and with that, over to you, Emily. Hi, I am Emily. 
Today, I'm telling you a bit about myself and the industry that I work in. I shall share with you first my qualification path, my professional journey, then my current work and the exciting global energy transition, the future challenges and opportunities. Starting with a bachelor degree in mechanical engineering, I work as a graduate in a food engineering consultancy firm, testing mechanical seals like the one here for the cooling pumps of mass production cars, how much it will know if it was running too hot, if we keep, kept, start and stop, start and stop the system, and how quickly they will be damaged if it run dry without the coolant. In another project, I model the heat transfer and defection of mechanical seal separating the liquid oxygen from the liquid hydrogen in the turbo pump of the Ariane rockets. Then a Liu John industrial project was started to study rubber seals performance for the oil, gas and chemical industry. I took the opportunity to register for an industrial PhD. I modeled tests and quantified the degradation of rubber seals in different fluids and conditions. This was one of the material property considered for an ammonia cooling system in an ice cream factory. This was a damaged seal from a high temperature, high pressure gas application. And this was one subject to air and water aging. After four years, I gained my PhD and chartership. I got involved in industrial standard committee and supervising other industrial students. At the same time, I participated in IMAE committees and mentored developing engineers. Many experienced and knowledgeable engineers had guide train and mentor me in my journey. They have shown me how to find and apply available technologies to new system and new processes, as well as how to generate new ideas and developing them to something practical. The world is changing. Engineers are responsible to turn and deliver science to things that make a difference in daily life. In 2006, I changed job to develop and install steam injectors in big biorefinal plants. Today in UK, 10% of the petrol we put in our cars is bioethanol, that is E10, corn and or wheat are heat and cooked with steam. Enzymes break the starch down to simple glucose. The yeast consume glucose to generate alcohol, and the distillation process extracts the alcohol as fuel. How the starch is being cooked upstream at the beginning process can affect the performance and product downstream. Energy in condensate from distillation is used to heat up cooking water. Heat exchangers also cool down the hot cooked mash to 33 degrees C before adding the yeast, while on the other side, incoming cold water going into the distillation process is warmed up. This is a yeast count grid. The blue dogs are dead yeast and the little dogs are the baby yeast. When process spawn run continuously 24 hours, seven days every week, we have to control farrowing, schedule cleaning and maintenance, as well as mitigating internal pipe erosion. Over time, I extended my technical exposure in process engineering. I became a fellow member of IMAGE. At work, I also took on management responsibilities. And 
engineers takes on other responsibilities. Commercially, we have to secure finance for development and production. We carry out management tasks to make sure successful deliveries. This is why there are five different areas of competence in chartership. There are also very different routes to chartership. I have worked with many engineers starting from a different undergraduate degree, and there are others from a different academic background. IMAD has a booklet into introducing a career in our industry. You can download it from the IMAD website. In 2012, I returned as a senior consultancy in food engineering. I cover a range of EU research and development projects, from hydraulic valves and actuators in breweries, to offshore hydrogen and oxygen, gas compaction, storage, and food handling system, to an intelligent air ventilation and control system for indoor swimming pools. Now, I work for Industrial Food Solution of Continental that manufactures hoses to convey foods. In addition to the oil and gas industry, many other industries use hoses for mass transfer, such as agriculture, construction, food and beverages, mining, refueling, and water management. Based in Grimsby, the east coast of the UK, Dunlop Oil and Marine manufactures marine hoses for oil transfer worldwide. Back in 1955, Grimsby was the largest fishing port in the world. Today, the fishing fleet is reduced, but it is still an important region for fish processing. We also have other active industries, such as process plants, refinery, and offshore wind turbines generating electricity. Last year, the UK government selected the East Coast Carbon Capture, Utilisation and Storage Industrial St Cluster in northern England as one of two to be set up and running by mid-2020s. Another two more clusters will be running in UK by 2030. The idea of carbon capture and storage is to collect carbon dioxide emission from major industrial sites. Compress and cool them to liquid, transport by pipeline or ship to offshore location. Then we inject them into depleted oil and gas fuels or aquifers. Gigatons per year of carbon dioxide will therefore be taken out of the Earth atmosphere. Large scale carbon capture and storage is still at an early stage of development. But the International Energy Agency are saying that it will be virtually impossible to meet global climate targets without using this technology. The scale up and knowledge, effective techniques and equipment developed over decades in the oil, gas and chemical industry are most closely related to carbon capture. We are now actively leading the development. Meanwhile, hydrogen and ammonia are projected to be the important green fuels in 2050. Hydrogen is generated from water electrolysis using green energy from wind, solar or hydropower. And ammonia acts as a career of green hydrogen. We have a lot to, real to do to realize it. Our industry and governments are investing and pushing the development of technology and infrastructure. 
For example, in my work, marine hoses, hundreds of meters long in each system, have been used to transfer oil off shore and in ports. They stay in the marine environment throughout their service life, 5 years, 10 years, or even 15 years. They have to withstand the elements of the ocean, wave, tide, wind, temperature, even hurricanes and earthquakes. Similar processes will be required to transport liquid carbon dioxide and liquid ammonia. But we have to use compatible new host materials and new host construction that minimize their conversion back to gases. We are now developing and qualifying these hoses in Dunlop Oil and Marine Grimsby. Engineers everywhere have a busy time ahead for many years to come to provide green energy for the world's population. Thank you for your attention. Thanks so much, Emily, Revy, and Masood. We've had a great introduction to the energy and chemical industries, and yeah, what an insight provided to the to the sheer scope and kind of interaction that a mechanical engineer has in those industries. Now we'll be taking a turn uh, with Morris to look at the pharmaceutical industries. So I don't know about you guys, but I'm certainly interested to see what those differences might be. Over you to Morris. Good morning, everyone. And welcome to this talk about mechanical engineering in the pharmaceutical industries. To introduce myself, I am Maurice Wellington, Vice Chair of the IMACE Process Industries Division, Northwestern Centre. The presentation covers the type of jobs in the industry, including plant and equipment design, commissioning, validation activities, plant operation, maintenance and reliability, energy use, plant integrity assurance. We hope that the content will be of interest for engineers considering working in the pharmaceutical industries. Why work in the industry? The pharmaceutical industry is a major recruiter in the UK, directly employing around 73,000 people. As there are still thousands of diseases for which we have no cure, the work of the pharmaceutical industry will continue to be essential. This gives potential for long-term employment and career progression, both within the UK and globally. Health and life science markets are predicted to grow up to 10% per year in the next decade. As the benefits of new medicines improve people's lives all over the world, not many jobs offer you more satisfaction. The role of mechanical engineers in the pharmaceutical industries. The principal areas in which mechanical engineers are employed are plant and equipment design, plant commissioning, validation activities, plant operation, maintenance and reliability, energy use, plant integrity insurance. Design activities. Design engineers are responsible for a total system. The design engineer usually works with detailed designers to develop the conceptual, preliminary and final design. They work with others to develop an idea and related specifications. They may direct the design effort. They will typically be involved with complex design such as a pharmaceutical production system rather than individual equipment items. Mechanical piping design engineers design and specify process and utility piping. This includes pipework materials of construction, pressure rating of the pipework system, pipe joints and gaskets. HVAC and building services. Building services and site engineers 
are responsible for facilities ventilation, air conditioning, heating and cooling, air filtration, pressure differentials and rooms, noise levels. Building services systems are complex to ensure that the product processing is carried out under controlled temperature and humidity conditions. Site services include water systems, cooling water, demineralized water, steam systems, solvent storage, refrigeration systems. Pharmaceutical facilities are large users of energy. Clean rooms. Clean rooms and equipment layout. There is controlled access to clean rooms, changing rooms and corridors. The process and equipment layout design needs to be considered with access for operability, personal movements, product components, raw materials and maintenance access. Room finishes to be specified for hygiene, equipment and safety. Chemical and static resistant finishes are required with sealed rounded floor to wall junctions for cleaning purposes. Service lines enter the room need to have sealed access. An area planning sheet for each room is to be completed to include details of room area size and ceiling height, position of doors and windows, wall, floor and ceiling finishes, illumination levels, possession of electrical sockets and controls, air conditioning, temperature, humidity, filtration, makeup air ventilation and mechanical services. Project engineering. Project engineers combine engineering and project management disciplines. They lead a team of technical staff who implement any particular requirements. The work may range from the introduction of a new piece of equipment to the design, build, construction and fitting out a complete manufacturing facility. This includes coordinating the engineering aspects of a project from development, design, procurement, construction and commissioning. Interpretation of drawings and knowledge of design standards. Project planning and scheduling. Supervision of engineering staff and site contractors. Responsibility for overall aspects of the project. Validation. Validation engineers have a highly technical role and require a good understanding of the roles and responsibilities of all the disciplines. Validation engineers are responsible for documentation that the procedure, process or activity consistently leads to the expected results. It can involve both systems and equipment and can be split into various specialities including computer validation, process validation and cleaning validation. Validation protocols are written approved methods for ensuring that the facility and equipment has been designed, specified, installed, commissioned as intended. The validation stages include the validation master plan, which is the scope of the validation of the facility and equipment. Design qualification, to qualify that the design is, un is intended. Equipment verification, does the equipment supply match the specification? Installation qualification. Is the built installation in accordance with the design? Operational qualification. Has the equipment been commissioned and operates as designed? Change control. Approved changes and recording of any required changes and modifications. Plant engineering. Plant engineers are responsible for managing site maintenance for both the pharmaceutical production plants and the site services. The duties include planning routine maintenance of equipment and machinery. By working with other disciplines, the plant engineer will provide expertise for equipment development and incorporation of efficient maintenance methods. 
There are other engineering roles that work closely with mechanical engineers. Process engineers usually are chemical engineers, control and instrumentation engineers, electrical engineers, civil engineers, structural engineers, construction engineers and commissioning engineers. Professional development. There are opportunities for professional development. Mechanical engineers working in the industry deal with a wide range of equipment to enable them to gain new experience and skills. They often move on to middle and senior management in the industry. This is part of their continuing professional development. The IMEC -E has a pharmaceutical committee to encourage engineers working in the industry. That concludes my presentation. Thank you. Thanks, Morris. So that concludes our presentation for today um, and opens up the question and answer period. So again, to all of our attendees, if you open up the ask a question box, you can type in exactly what you want to pose to any one of the four uh, presenters today. We've already got a couple coming through, so I'm going to jump straight in and we've got a good amount of time. So feel free to submit. Um, first up, we have a question which says, what would you expect in a job interview? Um, so maybe I could pose that to Masood. I'm wondering if you have some experience both as an interviewer and an interviewee. Yep, uh, thank you, Abby. Uh, I think, uh, I assume this is coming as someone who's new to the process industry. And uh, it, for, I think the key one is how curious you are to learn new skills and explore new opportunities in the uh, in the new industry. Uh, a process industry for mechanical engineers is a bit of unknown. So uh, I would uh, recommend anyone who wants to join a process industry to do some research on the companies and processes. So when you go for an interview, you have a good, fair uh, uh, understanding of what the specific company does and also what the person the industry is about uh, but mainly is just to show you know uh, that you are curious to learn absolutely yeah that's some great advice um, and Morris would you want to add anything specifically for pharmaceuticals because I imagine in a lot of mechanical engineering degrees people may not have some direct knowledge of pharmaceuticals but they may have had more with energy no, I, I think um, it, it's transferable skills, really. Um, as Masood was saying, uh, the, the 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 process industry is quite quite broad, and it 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 carries over into the pharmaceutical industry. It's it's just that they, they do things differently. But the the basic, um, if you've got a good background in process engineering and understand it, um, I don't think you'd have any problems working in the pharmaceutical industry. Absolutely. Yeah, that's really encouraging. And yeah, one of the great uh, abilities of mechanical engineers are to kind of conquer problems in any sort of field. Um, another question we have here I maybe could ask to Rory is how long does it take to design for a facility? Because you mentioned quite a few different things of equipment and floor spacing. Um, so how long might a project like that take in the energy industry? So... Um... It will vary, I think, dependent on size of the facility, complexity, um, and perhaps new and emerging technologies, if they're involved, that could uh, take some time. In my experience, the ballpark figure is about a year for a design. Um, that is not a complete design. There'll be <laughs> always more uh, or more to be done. Um, some facilities could definitely be done in less, uh, and certain enormous mega projects could take significantly longer. Um, but it's, yeah, it's not a short journey at all. So roughly a year. Awesome. Now I've got a question from Mark, which says, what is the realistic timescale for the large production of green hydrogen? And what are the career opportunities in the Northwest area? So I'll leave it to you guys. Who's the, who's the expert on green hydrogen? Can you, can you, we, I, I um, can uh, jump in, Abby. Uh, and so I think that the green hydrogen, or in fact any hydrogen generated, the challenge now is not necessarily the production, it's more of a consumption. How, how do we consume the, the hydrogen? 
uh, and of most of the uh, the uh, the consumers of the gas, for example, so the gas turbines or the burners or actually boilers in our houses, they are not designed to take hydrogen, uh, and that needs to develop and change, uh, which needs to work hand in hand with the production of the hydrogen. Uh, but, but I suspect in the, probably in the next five to ten years, you will see mass hydrogen production, which uh, ultimately will end up in let's say our homes or in in the uh in the network for the uh the turbines to burn uh Stanley, if you want to add anything to that um I think there is a lot of work being developed and the infrastructure as well, so it is um we have to make sure the equipment can produce hydrogen and it can be transporting hydrogen um yes, there is a um, a major aim um, to achieve uh, rapid development in this coming 10 years. And it is a law in this week, uh, in the law of England, so region, because we are the major, major industrial areas. Thanks for that. Um, Morris, we have a question for you, which asks, are different drugs made very differently? So as far as the processing goes from one to another, how much variation is there? Well, yeah, yeah. There's a huge variation depending on um, what the particular process is, whether it's a biochemical bio, um, or a synthetic chemical. Um, it, 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 it is, it is differently, and um, the, the, the in fact that the plant, the plant is. Um, you can't make them all the same because they, they all have um, different effects on people, and. Uh, they um let me see they, 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 each drug is is unique and it has to be manufactured in a particular way that's when it's end paid when it's out of patent and it's well understood the 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 generic companies will make it as it was as it was designed originally you follow me everyone <laughs> yeah absolutely Thanks for that. Um, and Emily, I've got a question for you. You have some experience in both the industrial and academic fields of engineering. What would you say drew you to both of them and the kind of combination? Um, can you repeat the question again? What? Yeah, of course. It's your experience has both academic sides with your PhD, but also industrial sides sort of in the field. How would you say those work together? Um, do you have a preference between them? And yeah, how have you brought them to be combined rather than just one or the other? Um, the, the major thing is for industrial applications um, development and it, you're talking uh, shorter time scale. So it is, um, it is a rush to, um, to re realize it. So you're taking, you're taking um, one or two years will be, will be a lot. If in the, in the academic side, they normally is more foresighted. You can have wider ideas, so you can have something, uh, and it is normally longer time scale, three, three, three years or more. Um, certainly in the academic side, we were looking at hydrogen way before um, the mass push now. So, so, Yes. So, so academically, you're looking more um, new stuff um, that might or may not be realized. Um, industrial side, you are make, you are developing things, you are researching things and developing things that you want to get it quick. You want, everyone want it now, sort of the, the what's to make it workable. Yeah. Sure. So I think that both of them, both. We need both. We need both sides to um to 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 get the best for everyone. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Combining those strengths. That's great. Um. And Revi, a question for you. Would you have any advice for young engineers sort of entering the field today, or maybe those professionals looking for a kind of change in industry? Um. What would be your kind of advice for them in the start of their careers? Um. So to be honest, I think for me that would tie into what Masood said earlier with the interview prep. I think research into the process industries is going to be uh, 
of paramount importance. It's um, it doesn't get a lot of spotlight. It doesn't get the spotlight that I'd say uh, aerospace art brothers might get. Um, but the work is interesting. It's just a little hidden. So I think first step would be to research that. Um, from my position, I'm an equipment engineer. So I would start looking into the types of equipment used uh, within the industry, especially in the types of plants that you may want to design or build and get a good understanding for how they operate, how they're specified, how they're designed. And that should either pique your interest uh, or give you a good head start into coming into the industry. That's great. And we have a question from James, which says, what has been the experience of the personnel on the webinar in the movement from university to the working roles they have? How much mentoring have they had? So I think everyone can answer this, but Masood, kick it off. Have you had any mentors in your professional career? Uh, yes, no, absolutely. I think it's like any any uh, job you join, uh, and uh, and typically the the companies who work in the uh, uh, the person as are big companies. So, uh, and uh, there'll be uh, lots of uh, in, in, let's say chartered engineers and, and mentors to help you learn. Uh, it's as as we alluded to. It's, it's not always a straightforward university to uh, to press industry because it's it's a bit uh, unknown to some people. Uh, but when you uh, uh, discover it, basically, you'll find it's very, uh, it's a very exciting uh, uh, industry to work on, and the, uh, the the talent development wherever I've worked on, I've, I've seen uh, people are very keen to. I think we've lost you, Mister. If you're teach on. you. Uh, or We may be having some connection issues with Masood, so I'll come back to him. But Morris, could uh, you take over and maybe suggest what uh, is a strength to look for in a mentor for some of our uh, attendees who may be looking to find a mentor, what they should be looking for? The, the, you, you need to um, look at the person's back, background and his experience, and um, that is being exposed to a, a wide range projects um, as we say in the IMAC, uh the width and depth so you, you've you got to know the, 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 all the issues wide range of issues then then perhaps the depth and one or two um, things you, you know the detail you can't know the detail about everything but um, you probably know where, where, to, where to get it from um, so uh, and, and also uh, you you've got to respect your your mentor as well, and, uh, which I think uh, usually comes to the the grey hair syndrome. <laughs> I don't know. Um, and, uh, I I found that as 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 I've moved on with, with jobs, uh, I've gained something from each each project, which I've I've learnt, and um, the the fact that if you keep doing different projects and meeting different people, you, you gain you gain a lot of experience. And it's best, and particularly in the pharmaceutical industries, where, where there there are a lot of opportunities, you know, to meet all sorts of people and um, deal deal with all sorts of suppliers and contractors. And and, and, and as you move through this stage, you tend to pick up a lot of stuff. That I think I can't say much more than that. No, thanks. Yeah, it's awesome. And Revi, we have a question from Tahib. I wonder if you could answer. He says, as a mechanical engineer looking to work in the oil and gas sector, should I look to work as a project engineer or as a project manager? Um, yeah, that's going to be a slightly difficult question to answer. This depends greatly on everyone's individual circumstances. Um, my two cents would be to evaluate your skill set against the job description very carefully. Ensure that you're able to fulfill the function. If you are new to the industry, uh, you may struggle in a position such as a project manager if you're unaware of how the projects are executed uh, and what the key issues are. So something like a project engineer, that would definitely be um, more suitable within those two options. Or alternatively, you could join as a mechanical engineer in the oil and gas field, much like myself. Um, and yeah, work your way up. Absolutely. Yeah. And I think I would even jump in and add from my own experience in that 
as a young engineer, sometimes it's better to keep the technical aspects. And sometimes if you go into the kind of management positions, you you lose touch with the kind of the real core engineering. Um, but it's definitely specific to different companies. So between two companies, a job description for a project engineer and a project manager might actually be incredibly similar. Um, so, yeah, it's very specific to the employer, to the circumstances. Um, but yeah, never lose touch with the engineering. Now we've got a question from David, which says, what are the key design standards used in these industries? So maybe Morris, you could go first for the pharmaceutical. What are the key design standards used in the industry? The, the pharmaceutical industry historically um, is US based. So they, they, they 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 tend to use ASME, American Society of Mechanical Engineers, API, um, the, the 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 sort of um, pipe ratings, the flange the flange ratings, um, it, it, and and the air conditioning as well. It's it's mainly American standards, and all the suppliers understand understand the american standards and what 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 to what what to supply for it's quite i found if if you do something to european standards it's 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 quite difficult because no no one quite understands them where where the american pharmaceutical industry is international industry so they more or less adopted it and they were the first to pe you know to put air conditioning in and and uh, and, uh, and um get pipe work systems going and it's been adopted internationally so uh, you, you'd have to have an understanding of american standards but they, they are freely available and everyone in the pharmaceutical industry understands them and the suppliers as well Is that okay right. Yeah, and Emily, I might even pass over to you. Obviously, with your hose experience, you may know as well. But what are the kind of key design standards that you've come across in your professional life? Well, um, at the moment, um, for the marine hose, we have um, the Gunfo standard, um, an API standard. Um, but uh, while we were working, uh, I have been working for different projects. Um, we have um, we use API standard, but uh, also for a lot of the for offshore for offshore facility, I would say, and 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 ANSYS, the American standard for the offshore industry. But a lot of the onshore process industry, we will use ISO standard. Yeah, um, it is easier to get flanges piping in metric size. Um, than than in um, inch uh, in inch inch size imperial size. So we use, and there are a lot of health and safety, a lot of health and safety standard um, processes, and also pass uh, pass standard as well. Um, that, uh, in the document that I mentioned, they have um, they have um, it has some length to tell you what uh, this type of standard that we follow. Yeah. Uh, good example in that in, in in that document we have used a lot of standard i would say very yeah yeah thanks emily yeah. um uh, we can i, I show uh, um I mentioned American standards but they 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 are also producing si um editions as well so it's sort of standard where where you say a 2 inch would be 50 millimeters or, or a, a two-inch flat, you know, a two-inch pipe, and and that's the way they get around it, really. Mm. Sure. Yeah. Thanks, Morris, for that yeah, little okay. additional fact. Um, we are coming to the end of some of our questions, but we still do have ten minutes. So if anybody has any further questions, feel free to submit them. For now, though, I will just change the slide to our last one, because if any of you would like a CPD certificate, there is an email that should be showing on your screens now, which will just evidence your attendance um, to this presentation. Um, also, there's a link there for a feedback form. We would love to invite um, your kind of perspectives, your thoughts, um, your opinions, so we can yeah continue to grow and make these presentations even better. But we still do have some time if anybody wants to submit some any further questions. I'll give you a couple of minutes to have a think or jot down those emails or website. 
um, I want to just mention to be uh, about mentoring in in our industry. Yes, there will be there are very uh, many engineers who will be able to, and who are willing to mentor, but ultimately it has um, the development of individual has to be driven um, by. Uh, the young young developing engineers. So so they they if they be don't be afraid to approach. If you approach, then you will find a lot of senior engineer will be very happy to 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 have you. Yeah, I'd agree with you, Emily. And actually, it's far less intimidating for someone wanting a mentor to ask for one because actually that's quite a position of respect and honor rather than a mentor sort of um, imposing themselves saying, do you want to be mentored? So yeah, I definitely agree with that advice to ask for it. Uh, a question from James is advice on where to find the previous process webinar on water. Um, so all of our IMECI, uh presentations from the process industry division are on the Institute of Mechanical Engineers YouTube page. Um, there's also some links on LinkedIn. Um, but if you Google it, it was on food, water and wastewater. So using those key terms, you should be able to find some of our past presentations as well. I believe this might be the third introduction one. Um, and yeah, we've got some more coming up as well. Thanks, James. Okay, then. And with that, we've got no further questions. Um, so we'll be able to give you a little bit of your time back this morning or afternoon. Um, thank you to all of our presenters for um, the time they've put in to make these presentations, giving us a really kind of detailed insight um, and introduction to, yeah, their fields of work, their um, professional uh, insights um yeah it's been a real treat to be able to hear from you all and thanks for all of you attending for yeah being a part of this um being curious like masood described um wish you all the best in your kind of future endeavors if you want to join any of these industries i'm sure any of the presenters today will be happy to connect with you either on linkedin um or if found differently but yeah thank you all for your time have a great rest of your days <laughs>